I'm Gabrielle Watt. I live in Warrnambool in Victoria, Australia, so down on the south coast. So it's quite cool a lot of the year, uh, particularly in winters here, and it's quite windy. Um, I'm a nurse, and we moved to Warrnambool from Darwin, which is the top of Australia and quite tropical, about 18 months ago. So my husband and I both grew up in Victoria. We'd met, we'd gone to the Northern Territory to Darwin separately and met up there. Uh, we thought we were going to stay there forever. And then we had young kids and the Puller family, you know, brought us back. <laughs> so we actually moved down, when we moved down to Warrnambool, we thought we were going to buy. We'd never entertained the idea of building. Neither of us are in the industry. We just thought, oh, that's too hard. You need to know stuff to do that. So we came down and looked around Warrnambool. It's only a population of about 30,000 and they're, actually wasn't that much on the market and what we did find just didn't really appeal. So after a good year of looking, we started to think about other options. And when my husband first said, let's build, I was like, no, we can't. Um, but then through maybe a bit of Googling, I can't quite remember, but I stumbled across Amelia's Undercover Architect podcast and I was driving a lot for work at the time. So I put that on and have a listen. And over catching up on a lot of series, I started to realise that there was information available to help a novice like myself. Um, and once I got a little bit of confidence about thinking this could be possible, we just stumbled across an ideal block of land that we just loved and we felt like it was once in a lifetime opportunity, beautiful views over the river and a gorgeous part of Warrnambool. So we bought the block and thanks to what we've learned from Amelia's uh, courses and podcasts, we're quite confident now about the build process. We, I was nervous about everything. I didn't know what a good house was. I didn't know how to spot a good house. I didn't know how you choose a builder. I didn't know how you'd land on a design. I didn't know whether we could afford it. I didn't know what building might cost. Um, and I, I just literally didn't know where to begin. And I knew there was a lot of stuff and decisions that had to be made to build and everyone says it's an intensely stressful process. Uh, we've got a four-year-old, a two-year-old. I was like, oh, I just don't think we can take it on. It felt like all of it was overwhelming for me uh, eight months ago. <laughs> I started to listen to Amelia's resources and understand some of the, the parameters around some of those things. I was like, okay, we are going to need to devote time to this, so let's look at And I looked at how I could rejuggle my work a little bit and my husband's work so that I could have some dedicated time each week and that's what we've stuck with. Pandemics, you know, notwithstanding, but mostly tried to stick to that schedule of really dedicated time to keep this project moving along. So, having found this block of land and loved it, so we met with a few people, and again, Amelia's expertise, she gives you a toolkit um, about what questions you can ask, you know, what you should ask, and how you can assess whether the person's going to be the right person to work for, for you. So, that was great. So, we went around and met with quite a few people, ended up with our number one back, back to the first person we met with. And it's actually taken months of back and forward to get our concept plans exactly where we wanted. Um, the, first, the first iteration was fantastic. So we'd already talked about sustainability. We talked about the Northern Orientation. We talked about all the key things. Um, we talked about that we didn't need the four bedrooms, actually. We only needed three bedrooms, but we needed a second living space that could be a guest bedroom. All those sort of things about quality, not necessarily quantity, that again, Amelia's course really emphasises. So when we got the first lot of concept plans back, um, they were actually 90% of the way there. But there were some tweaks, and again, because of Amelia's course, that I was able to see, oh, actually, this would flow a bit better, or I'm a bit unsure about this. So the designers worked with us, and we've just got the final concept plans through today. We've all already met with a couple of um, builders to have a chat with them about their processes, and again, the the questions that uh, Amelia recommends, which has been really, really valuable. And so we'll get our preliminary quotes now. Obviously, that might change the design, but we're open to that and we understand that's part of the process. So we haven't started building yet. We're hoping to be starting by the end of the year. But I just have a confidence. I mean, I would never have got this far <laughs> without that course. And I have a confidence in understanding the next steps and managing the budget because there's an additional course that Amelia's just set up about how to manage your budget. So that uh, I'm looking forward to diving into. Yeah, oh, it was wonderful. I think at the time my husband and I had kind of talked about building and I must have done some Google about, you know, how to build a new house and, and stumbled across Amelia's podcast. Um, I was striving a lot for work, sometimes seven or eight hours a day. So I remember just putting on an episode mid, mid podcast, latest season, oh yeah, see what this woman's about and just was absolutely captivated. So I think 
you know, I had to go back and catch up on like eight seasons, but I either would listen to it in the car or I'm a runner and with young kids, the only time I get to listen to podcasts was when I was out for my run. So every morning when I go for a run, I just pop another one on, learn more, come home to my husband. Oh, blah, blah, blah. We have to do this. We have to think about that. Um, I think he grew to dread that for a little while. But anyway, I'm up to date on all the podcasts now so we can all relax a little bit. <laughs> I didn't consider going headlong into it because I felt that the builders would have their own interests and understandably they're running their own business. So I, I knew particularly for design that I had to have some nous about what would suit us rather than be told by someone else what that might be. So that was where Amelia's course was really helpful. I've certainly looked a bit at other resources, but I guess um, I don't, and, and we ended up using a designer. It's not like I went back and then designed my own house, um, but that was never the intent of the course. It was always to inform you about how to make those decisions and how to know, you know, if the design was going to work for your family. So I felt that that was really valuable. Um, and the interior design course, I'm partway through, I've listened to the podcast, I'm partway through working through the material. Um, and again, I think we'll probably still use an interior designer to help us hone down some of the choices. But again, it helps me know the right questions and where I do or don't want to go with that person. So not long after I started listening to the podcast, Amelia had a short, um, I think it was a five day or a 10 day kitchen design challenge. Um, and I signed up to that and learned so much about kitchens and dimensions and how there's just these really advisable spaces. And I had never thought about it before. And I just kind of went, oh wow, this is gold. So when the home design masterclass came up, I thought I want that level of information for every room in the house. So my husband and I sort of discussed, yeah, we, I mean, obviously in this stage and particularly because it's coming out of your pocket right now, you know, you don't have that home loan yet. So you're handing over the money directly. So we really had to think about whether it was worth it. But um, I think the design's, frankly, the most important bit. <laughs> well, one of the most important bits. So we are quite comfortable with the idea of investing that time in the design so that then, well, in me understanding the design, so that then we were able to work with the designer to get what we want and critique that. Oh, everything. I don't know how long you've got, <laughs> but things like even just uh, the bed position in the master bedroom and making sure you don't walk on sideways, uh, having the entry to the walk-in robe and the ensuite away from your bed so you're not looking into those spaces really appeals to us and we've incorporated that into our design. Um, sketching out furniture layouts being really key. We have, this we have this alfresco area on our concept plans and the designer had put two lots of sliding doors in and while that appealed theoretically to look at it when I went to map out where our outdoor furniture would go I was like oh yeah that's actually does not leave us the space so we've turned one set of those sliding sliding doors which were on um, adjacent walls anyway we've turned one back into windows so that we can put a couch under it um, I was in our revision today, I was like to the designer, so just make sure those 820 millimetre laundry doors get in, please. Like from, I could go on all day, just the level of detail Amelia provides, big and small, about the design. I'm very organised. I do like to plan. I wrote a lot of notes and every time I've got the concept plan through, I've gone back through my notes of what to avoid and recommended dimensions. Not that, you know, they're gospel, but just making sure that they fit with our house and it's been super helpful. Yeah, working out already where appliances will go and those sort of things, which is what she recommends early in the design phase, has definitely influenced our kitchen. Um, and, and the spaces too, and thinking about how those spaces will be used and what the dimensions are to make them feel generous but not necessarily be a large footprint has been really helpful. So the Home Design Masterclass uh, was split into modules and it was quite, quite clear, you know, it was the where we sleep, where we eat, where we wash, I think. Anyway, so it was quite clear. It, it went into a lot of dimensions um, and avoid and recommends, which was really good. It was very structured for each module, so you knew what was coming. I think listening to that on a podcast only would have been quite difficult. I mean, A, who wants to scribble down all the dimensions? And they were included in an end slide, so you didn't have to. But I took a lot of notes through that course. So every second evening or so, I'd sit down and 
you know, knock over a module, basically. I would say, to be honest, I found it relatively intense. Um, it wasn't something that I could have had play in the car and still got the full benefit out. So I did actually really take some time and go through each module carefully. But as I said, I am a details person. I do now have all these notes that have helped me, you know, with really refining the con uh, the concept plan. So I think that the audio podcasts um, have probably had more general information. There's always the you know, episode notes you can go to. Whereas for something like design, uh, where you need to physically see what it looks like and Amelia shows you lots of examples, I think being able to see that visually and sit and spend that time was valuable for me. I can only speak for the design phase because that's all we're in so far. But I mean, again, the whole thing, I would not have known where to start. But specifically, knowing the floor of the rooms, having mapped the furniture, having been able to uh, work out where windows and doors should and should not go and we have altered that a bit uh, our first concept plans actually had the laundry on the north side and the second family room on the southwest side which is kind of our utility side of our house so I rang the designer and said this house is 90% great and what were you thinking with that so we got that changed around and it's made it far more serviceable. Whereas had we had I accepted that concept and gone with it, I'd be forever ruining having to walk across the hallway to the laundry the whole time and having no light in our second family room. So there is a lot of examples of where I can just see. And also I think I would have built bigger. I would have been like, oh, the biggest space must be the best space. So I would have asked for an additional bedroom and really compromised maybe on uh, how those areas are finished whereas I really feel that um, Amelia's been able to show us how to do and the des our designer we've worked with who's great how to make generous spaces without having to build large so they're the main areas that I feel that have really helped now yeah I would say so I'm actually um relatively assertive person anyway and because of the work I do I I am a nurse, but I do a managerial position, so I'm pretty used to handling, um, handling situations where people have different point of views. So I don't feel I would never have felt uncomfortable about having difficult conversations. But what I feel now is that I've got the knowledge to back those up. So instead of just saying I'm not sure about this, I'll be able to say. And I mean, this is only from the design point of view. Obviously, there's far, far more stages for me to go, and I may have a different tune <laughs> down the track. But I feel that I've got a good assessment of how to assess uh, the builder that will be best for us and have that good communication. And also then that clear guidelines of, no, this was carefully mapped out. It was agreed in the contract. So what would you like to do to rectify it or whatever that needs to be? So one of the things uh, between the master design masterclass and the interior design course is really about getting your choices done before the build starts. And we've got very dear friends who've been working on plans for like three years and then it's gone through various iterations. They've just started finally building about three months ago, which is fantastic. But I rang her the other night and she's like, oh, I just had a call from the builder and he needs to know what kind of specific colour bond we're doing and whether it has like the round edges or the square edges and he needs to know by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and I was like how how has this not been discussed I mean obviously I didn't say that to her but she's like oh I'm getting a call from the builder every day and I have to google that night and let him know by 10 o'clock the next morning and I just thought that is my idea of help because she's trying to run a family and a you know career and all of that as well so I am hoping that having armed with the knowledge of the course of what you choose beforehand and that you do make those decisions early and then yes of course ebbs and flows and some products will be out of stock and you may have to exchange or whatever but having all of that done before you finalize the build before you sign the contract so that you get an accurate costing on it so that you can sit back and the stuff that you're called about is the abnormal or the you know that the unexpected i should say rather than the day to day so I'm hoping this build will be a lot smoother than, than my friend's current build. <laughs> uh, the two, each module had a what to avoid at the end. Like, I mean, there was a lot of information about what to do, but it had a nice little summary of just what to avoid, which was really useful for me and the dimensions for each route. Like, rec suggested dimensions, i.e. don't make your space smaller than this or else it 
probably won't function well. So I found that really helpful. I found all of the modules very helpful, but I found those two areas particularly helpful as we move through. Uh, well, I was telling my GP actually about Amelia and her courses the other day. Obviously, it's an individual decision. Obviously, it depends on that individual's already prior knowledge and, uh, and sense of, of understanding and whether it's their first build. But if it was their first build and they came into it like me without that knowledge, I'd say that that, that money that you spend, it's a drop in the ocean compared to your build and it can just influence and save you, I think quite a lot on your build. It saved us a lot of time on our design because we've been able to get the design we want, you know, exactly right. Amelia is really passionate about helping, about sharing her knowledge and about helping people avoid mistakes. So it's really lovely. I feel she gives a lot of information for free. I think she's very accessible with the information she gives through, through her podcast. Um, and I think she's just really generous. She just really genuinely wants to see people in the homes that they love. And uh, that vibe, her personality, the way she engages, the way she talks, that just really resonates with me.